and welcome to the PhD tour organized by the French Embassy in India. Today, we will be discussing on the thematic of marine sciences and biodiversity. I am Ms. Amrita Datta, the Deputy of the Attaché for Academic and Scientific Cooperation for West India, and I'm based in Bombay. I would now like to introduce you to all our panelists today. Uh, we have with us Dr. Manel Zakaria. He is a professor and an expert in underwater acoustics, sonar systems, and signal processing. He is also the president of the European Acoustics Association and a professor at the French Naval Academy. Uh, our next panelist today is Dr. Philippe Fondaven. He is an associate professor at the University of Brest, and he is also the deputy director of the Ecole Doctorale des Sciences de la Mer at Brest. Our third uh, panelist today is from, uh, is from University of Pierre and Marie Curie, uh, Dr. Pascal Bure Auberto. Her research topics include inertia, gravity waves, and turbulence. And to introduce you to our alumni for the day, we have with us Mr. Somen Malik. He's currently a doctoral student at the University of Rennes 1. His interest is to investigate and identify favorable conditions to maintain biodiversity. Now, coming to our theme of marine sciences and biodiversity, to address the increasing challenges faced by oceans and coastal ecosystems, it is a priority to train the next generation of ocean innovators, ecologists, and science experts, and place them in the forefront of research to answer the needs of the growing blue economy through, through top-level research-based training. France and India share common interests in the field of blue economy ocean exploration, monitoring of oceans, sustainability, and coastal ecosystems. The French Biodiversity Agency supports the implementation of public policies in the field of knowledge, conservation, management, and restoration of terrestrial, aquatic, and marine biodiversity. Moreover, France has a rich network of marine biology stations and exploration vessels. From this year, that is from 2021 to 2030, the United Nations has declared this decade to be the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. This is to support efforts to reverse the cycle of decline of ocean health and gather ocean stakeholders, which will ensure ocean science can fully support countries in creating improved conditions for sustainable development of the ocean. Biodiversity and oceans are at the heart of all the political and scientific agendas in France and in India. In France, the CNRS, which is equivalent to the CSIR here, has more than 2,000 scientists which are working in more than 50 labs in these domains. France, uh, research is extremely important for France, and it spends approximately 48 billion euros per year on research, which comes, uh, comes to approximately of 2.2% uh, of its GDP. France has more than 431,000 people involved in its research, which include professors, researchers, engineers, technicians, and support staff. Their work is published in the best known international scientific journals, and they have the fourth highest index of impact in the world. 41% of these enrolled in the French doctoral schools are foreigners, and 54% of French scientific publications are the, are the result of international collaborations. Now, I would like to, uh, like to explain you all about PhD opportunities. For this, I would like to call upon our first panelist, Dr. Manel Zakaria, to take the floor. Manel. Good afternoon, everybody. I will try to make a general presentation on, try to be as comprehensive as possible on who is who in education and research in France in the area of marine science and technology. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. So uh, as uh, you know, and it was mentioned now, uh, marine science and oceanography is being part of, uh, on the political level of common interest since uh, now two or three years. And uh, many contact has been set up between 
French and uh, uh, Indian institutions. So just to make it uh, easy to understand from you, in France, marine science is mainly done in university and the research center, while marine technology is done in, in some university, but mainly also in engineering schools, uh, which are equivalent to your IITs and NITs, and in research units and in industry. You will not find much of uh, marine science, for instance, engineering school. In university, they use a lot of technology, but when it goes to making new equipment, it's somehow a balance between both. Uh, and probably you all know the CEPIPRA, which is a tool for the, for the exchange between France and India, which has been running for 30 years now. And uh, in August 2019, the importance of ocean and maritime cooperation has been highlighted by the prime, Indian Prime Minister and French President in their common declaration. Uh, for mainly including uh, hot topics like uh, um, uh, climate change and its effect on ocean, um, uh, marine renewable energy, and also the security in the Indo-Pacific region. So I will first uh, start with the university working in marine science and uh, they are uh, part is concentrated around Paris, part in the West Coast, and another part in the South Coast. The West Coast is equivalent to the East Coast in India, and the South Coast is more equivalent to the West Coast in India in terms of type of activity. So in Paris, you have Sorbonne University, and you have a detailed presentation uh, of uh, their activity. Plus, they have what we call marine station, which are located on the sea, seaside. You have three big marine station and a lot of smaller ones. And they recently created what they call the Ocean Institute, which is a multidisciplinary institute on ocean sciences and technology. Sorry. And we also have the Institute of Oceanography, which is in Paris, which is co uh, connected also to Monaco. On the West Coast, you have the University of Brest, University of South Brittany, the European Institute for the Sea, which is a gathering of seven lab and two international lab, and you'll have a presentation from them. And they have also interdisciplinary school for Blue Planet. And in addition, we have activities in Nantes and in Rennes. In the south, uh, we have two major points of focus, which are University of Toulon and University of Marseille. So these guys are taking care of what's happening in the Mediterranean Sea. These guys are mainly taking on the ocean side. And these guys are looking on both aspects and on the global models. Uh, research center in uh, France, CNRS is equivalent to the STL, and they also have a specific section on earth science and astronomy. The major actor in uh, marine science and technology is IFREMER. IFREMER, to make it equivalent to what you have in India is the combination of NIO, NIOT, NIO in Goa, NIOT in Chennai, and the fisheries institution. I don't remember where it is. So it was created in 84 by gathering at all this activity. We used to have many centers, one on technology, one on biology, and they gathered all together in exploration of the sea. They depend on the Ministry of Education and the Research, equivalent of an HRD, the Ministry of Environment, and the Ministry of Agriculture. So it's about uh, 1,500 scientists and engineers. The two major locations are in Brest and Toulon. Headquarters are now in Brest. And they have 
about 15 smaller stations also, and also implementation of French territories, including in the Indian Ocean. They are in charge of INCOS, which is the Ocean Data Center of France, which is connected to the data center in Europe. And they also manage all the oceanographic fleet in France. So it's really centralized. And uh, of course, they don't work by themselves. They work together with CNRS and with, with university I mentioned before. We have something specific, which is called CHOM, which is the hydrographic and oceanographic services of the navies, which is similar to hydrographic uh, um, service you have in India, but in addition, they do a lot of oceanography. Of course, it, they're working for the Navy, but also a lot of their work, including uh, establishing maps are done for civilians and Shom has an agreement with the equivalent in India for map exchanges. We recently created an institution called France Energy Marine, which is in charge of all marine renewable energy. And after a disaster we had uh, with a tanker, we created the so-called SED, whose job is managing marine pollution. So they were created for oil and now they are interested in uh, plastic waste, in chemical and all type of pollutant. We have a specific institution that is oriented to cooperation with uh, development, the developing country. And finally, a polar uh, institution of uh, polar research, which is equivalent to NCPOR in uh, Goa. So here you see the panel and you see the um, equivalent, uh, Indian equivalent. Uh, we have created uh, something like now 15 or more years ago, a cluster for innovation. And sorry, the two clusters are one in, um, oops, is there something wrong? Yeah, it's one in Atlantic and one in Mediterranean Sea, but they work in close cooperation and harmonization. They gather around uh, 200 companies, 350 small companies, 100 uh, academic organization and about 100 organization of research institution. And the interest of this that when you get there, you can get to all these guys in, on a single website. All the, and uh, They are the two leading lines are ecolog ecological transition and digital transformation, which are actually the two revolutions happening in the ma marine science and technology area. Uh, they focus on six area, port, logistics and shipping, defense, maritime safety and security, including cyber security shipbuilding and laser boat building, including dismantling of ship and building up uh, eco-friendly ships and uh, ships reducing uh, the noise of ships, marine energy resources, marine biological resources, and environmental and coastal management. So both have the same topics on their priority and they work in coordination and they uh, cluster all these people, make them work together and uh, build up projects. I'll give you some example of projects so you see the big variety of projects. Of course, there are many hundreds uh, that has been done in 15 or more years. One example is a harnessing tidal power so it can go up to building up a prototype and install it at sea. So this is a big, big uh, installation for marine energy. This one is uh, very interesting because it shows that uh, fundamental research can lead to very uh, interesting application in real life. This small animal was discovered by a scientist. I don't remember the name, but it's not important. 
while he was doing the research in deep sea and uh, or the biology at sea, and he noticed that this animal has a strange high level of oxygen in their blood. And that triggers a startup, which is now working together with a, a medical research institution. They extract the blood from this animal and they use it to uh, keep alive uh, organs for transplantation. You know, when you transplant an organ, they can only survive a few hours and they need oxygen. And by putting artificial blood from these animals, you can give them oxygen for much longer period. So you see, this guy was really a biologist and ended up uh, with a company on health and uh, helping people uh, in uh, such a difficult situation. This is, a, again, a shipping project on hybrid fishing vessels. So everything is included from uh, the noise uh, and uh, how the uh, to make a silent ship to avoid that the fish school may escape from your fishing and the fishing gear efficiency, etc. This is a more software oriented project on AIS messages, and the idea is to track all the ship by using the AIS messages. And when something abnormal is happened, the ship is uh, uh, defined as suspicious ship. And then you may have, I mean, if a ship disappears for two days and reappears after two days, they have been smuggling somewhere. So this is how now they track the ship for security and uh, terrorists. And finally, uh, we have recently created what we call Compris Mondial de la Mer which aggregates the whole marine science technology ecosystem in Western Brittany, including academic research institution and companies. And the interesting part that when you get on their website, you can have access to all these people, which is two universities, five engineering schools, as you see many uh, research center, government agency, medical institution also, and 10 master associated to the doctoral school that will be described uh, pretty soon. So uh, the interest is, we finally discovered that we have, uh, mainly when we go abroad, we have to coordinate between ourselves before going abroad. And for people from abroad, this will give you a single portal where you can discover many other people. And they are doing many action like coordination of uh, database of equipment between all the partners, networking. They organize ocean hackathon for interested people. And we are organizing the CTEC Week, which is a conference and exhibition which is organized every second year with about a thousand participants. And the guest country of this uh, conference this year will be India. And the topic is maritime transport uh, towards motor and greener solutions. So that will give you uh, an overview. Uh, I'm sure I didn't cover the great number of possible institutions, but at least the major institution and hopefully two of them are present with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Manel. Uh, now I would like to call upon Dr. Philippe Mongaven to inform you all about uh, PhD opportunities in his doctoral school and university. Philippe, you are on mute. Philippe, you are on mute. Thank you very much. So you see my presentation, yes? And when I change the slide is fine too? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So I will uh, thank you for this very nice uh, introduction. It will help me a lot because it's one example of a doctoral school. So it fits well after your, your presentation, Manel. So I'm Philippe Pondaven, Associate Professor at the University of Brest. 
and also so deputy director of the doctoral school in marine science for, for Brest. So on my side, I will mainly uh, focus on two points, a brief uh, description of the doctoral school, uh, and then uh, some practical uh, information of how to apply for a PhD. Uh, uh, at this uh, doctoral school, for example, how to apply for a PhD offer in this doctoral school. So first a brief description of this uh, doctoral school. So the main focus of the doctoral schools is uh, in, uh, as was said by Manel, marine and coastal uh, science. Uh, so it's located uh, on the west uh, coast of uh, France and uh, it's uh, gathering uh, universities, uh, engineering school and some uh, affiliated institutions. Uh, so it's uh, the, the main university of Brest, uh, Vannes, uh, Lorient, uh, Angers, Nantes, Le Mans and uh, Rennes also. Uh, for his uh, focus especially uh, on uh, fisheries in uh, Rennes and some also engineer school, EMT Atlantic, uh, also Ecole Navale as a, a school uh, in uh, marine science technology. And uh, so at the moment there is about 250 PhD students in uh, different fields and uh, 200 in Brest and the other in uh, the other university. So this configuration will change because in the next few years, because uh, there are new rules and uh, so it's, but the, the idea will stay the same. And so the affiliated institution are mainly Fremer, the Ecole Navale, Navy School, uh, the Hydrographic uh, CHOM uh, service, uh, Meteo France also uh, on weather forecast uh, um, models and things. And in terms of doctoral specialities, it's all about marine science and coastal science, but with different discipline, life, life science, this. So, from cellular biology, molecular biology, to ecology, marine microbiology, fisheries, and so on. Some chemistry, marine chemistry and oceanography, uh, physics and physical oceanography, including uh, signal processing and uh, uh, acoustic, and uh, what, for example, Ecole Navale is doing, or EMT Atlantic and other institutions some geosciences also, and some human and social sciences, private and public law, geography, economy. So the common object for all this discipline is uh, marine science and uh, coastal sciences. We are all working on these aspects. Then, so, very briefly, this is uh, the, the field of this doctoral school. And so how to apply for a PhD in such a doctoral school when you are from India or from everywhere around the world. First things to say is that applications are open to any student with a master degree or equivalent. For example, we, are, we have several PhD uh, students who uh, did uh, engineer school, so five years after the uh, baccalaureate, we say, and then uh, they applied for, for a PhD. So it's, there are some equivalents, uh, but the degree, the reference is a master degree or equivalent. Uh, locally in, uh, in Brittany, uh, so on the west coast of France, there is a master degree uh, offer in different fields. It's the same in, in uh, Sorbonne University. Uh, for example, Pascal will talk about that, I, I guess so. And uh, you have a website and you have uh, on this website a link for applying to a master degree. If you want to study uh, in France uh, before the PhD, you can do so. Uh, 
uh, because, for example, this is just one example of what is proposed in Brest. Uh, for example, you have uh, eight uh, different uh, fields from life and environmental sciences, so biotechnology, biology, including ecology, and so on, human and social science, and geoscience, chemistry, physics, engineering. Uh, so you can follow two years of master degree before applying for, for a PhD. Some are fully in English. Uh, all teaching is uh, performed in English, for example. In physics, I know. In biology, there is also one uh, master degree fully in English. Uh, so no need, uh, especially to speak uh, currently French to follow uh, at least some of this master degree. And then if we uh, speak specifically about how to apply it for a PhD, there is in this doctoral school, it may be different in the other, but there is a single website to apply online. It's only an online application for a PhD. So the website is here and uh, I, I have my, my slide are freely available so that you can follow it afterward. So when you go on this website, uh, you have here on the right side, uh, how to apply it if you want to apply for a PhD. And then you will immediately go to this uh, window where you see in different fields, for example, if you are more in geoscience, physics and so on, chemistry, you will find some PhD offer in SDU, is universe science. If you are more in life science, it's SDV, life science, human and social science, or engineering and technical uh, uh, offer. And if, for example, I take life science, you will see all the research laboratory which are offering a PhD. So what does it mean is each research unit or laboratory have several PhD offer. Some are fully funded uh, already uh, and some are not yet funded. In fact, this is a work of a PhD supervisor to find a funding for his PhD. So there are several options. It's either uh, via his host institution, I mean his uh, establishment, for example, at Brest, the University of Brest, each year offer uh, some PhD funding for in marine science from seven to 12 fully PhD, uh, full PhD funding. But also CNRS, uh, Manel talk about CNRS, IFREMER, uh, the Brittany region, um, and some other institution offer some PhD funding. And so if a PhD supervisor is lucky enough, he, he got a fully funded PhD uh, offer. And this PhD offer is a online offer online on this website. And so a student can apply uh, from everywhere around the world. So if I go back one minute on the other slide, for example, I will take an example. It's the Laboratoire des Sciences de l'Environnement Marin in Brest, the last laboratory at the end. You will see in this lab, there were in 2021, 14 PhD offers. You have the title, uh, the PhD supervisor, and you can download the PhD offer with all the description. And here, now it's closed because it was last year, but it will be open soon for the next round next year. The PhD uh, candidate can apply directly on the website. And to know if 
his background is fitting with the PhD offer, he can visit the website of the lab, for example, here. And in terms of marine science biodiversity in this lab, for example, the LEMAR, uh, it's a multidisciplinary laboratory with uh, organized in, in three teams. Uh, one is looking at more integrative physiology adaptation, adaptation of marine organisms from gene to population. In discovery is more marine ecology, uh, diversity, structure, biodiversity, and so on. And the last one, Chibido, is more on marine chemistry, biogeochemistry, modeling, and this kind of things. So you can, the student can visit the website and see if his background is fitting with the PhD offer. And then is, I go back, it just put online his application, his, his CV, his background, and so on. And at the end, uh, uh, also one extra slide, the full description of the application process is available online. So a student can follow up exactly what the different steps he has to, 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 to fit so that it does not miss any keys uh, and um, steps. And at the, at the very end of the process in late, late May, 2022, for example, the PhD supervisor will select two or three candidates for an interview, which is scheduled in June all the time. Video conference are used uh, now, so you don't need to come uh, in Brest for the interview. And the candidate is asked to present his background and his vision of the PhD. So he has, of course, we expect that the PhD student talk with the PhD supervisor by email or chat by, by phone. So for 10, 15 minutes, and then the scientific committee around the table will ask some question. And very soon after the interview, the student will know if his application uh, uh, is validated, if, if the PhD offer is, is uh, for him or her, for example. So it's a very open uh, process, all online uh, possible until the interview. And last year, we had at least two Two, two students from India, I think, who applied, or maybe la not last year, but the year before, we have at least one or two students from India who got a PhD funding and are now uh, doing their PhD in Brest. Uh, yeah. So that's yes. all. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Dr. Philippe, for your, uh, the details that you provided us. Uh, we will take a few questions at the end. Uh, now, moving on, I would like to invite Dr. Pascal to share her screen and uh, explain about her record of work to all of you. Okay. Um. Hello, everybody. I'm Pascal Bourreau-Berto. I'm a professor at Sorbonne University. I'm a physical oceanographer, and I'm, in, um, I'm deputy director of the doctoral school Sciences de l'Environnement de de France. So um, the, the, it's a regional and multidisciplinary doctoral school in environmental sciences. And so uh, with the uh, uh, various uh, research fields such as climate science, atmosphere, ocean, earth and planets, and, um, and uh, yes, uh, regarding uh, marine biology, we have the uh, biogeochemical cycles, global environmental changes, and um, so a lot of uh, modeling as well for the climate system and instrumentation and observations and special techniques. So um, 
maybe uh, so we are so it's a regional school uh, with different university and uh, the two main are uh, Sorbonne University so I'm uh, working at and Paris Saclay and uh, other University of Paris and um, uh, PSL but um, Sorry, I forgot where are the labs. Yes, so um, there are various labs uh, attached to the doctoral school. And uh, in oceanography, and especially in the field of uh, marine biology, and, uh, uh, there are uh, different marine stations at Sorbonne University, so at Roscoff. Uh, in Brittany and uh, on the Mediterranean Sea um, in uh, Villefranche-sur-Mer and uh, as well in the southern part of France, Banyuls. And uh, there is as well some uh, marine biology and biochemistry at uh, L'Océan in Paris, which is my lab. And so here you, you will find the information on the, of the, on the doctoral school at uh, on the website. Um, so the, the, the mission of the doctoral school is to follow the PhD students during their PhD work. So uh, with monitoring committee, uh, individual meetings, and, uh, and as well additional training during uh, the PhD with PhD courses. So the purpose is to, um, uh, well, to, to reinforce the fundamentals and as well to, uh, to participate to uh, trainings and summer schools. Um, maybe of interest here is uh, how to apply for a PhD. So uh, um, uh, it's uh, here, uh, there is a uh, there is a list on, uh, well, so it's, it's quite, uh, there are different uh, <laughs> possibilities. So maybe it's a little uh, complex here, but um, so there are specific financial support from the doctoral school. And uh, for this, the, the process begins in March with subjects that are uh, published online, selection of candidates and an interview in June. So this process is really uh, very, very selective, but there, there is as well a list of uh, subjects uh, with a financial support. So either for, with a, uh, funded on a contract uh, of the PhD uh, advisor or a specific program. And for the specific program, uh, here may be of interest to you is the Interface pour le Vivant, uh, with this, uh, this link and the as well Institute Initiative. And here there is a, a list also, uh, maybe I'll... Um, here the website, it will be soon in English, but right now it's in French. So you have um, sujet de thèse. Uh, and you have the sujet de thèse for the, for the, with financial support from the doctoral school. And you have as well sujet de thèse with another financial support. So uh, you, this, uh, and then you are, you are welcome to contact the PhD advisors. So this is on the website, but uh, we, are, we are in the process of joining um, uh, um, a specific system called ADUM. I, I think uh, Philippe presented it, I don't know, but uh, you, you can do it all do everything online and contact the, uh, the future PhD advisors and so on. But uh, the information will be on the website very soon. And uh, in any case, you can contact us. Uh, so there is a list of, uh, of the different contacts here. Um, I think that's about uh, that's all. The website and yes. Oops.
I finished and um, <laughs> I thank you so much. One further thank question. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Pascal. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, our alumni of the day, Mr. Samen Malik, uh, to share his experience with you about his uh, experience in app application for a PhD program in France. Samen, over to you. Hi, uh, thanks for introducing me and giving me this opportunity to share my experience with prospective students and guide them. Uh, hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, I come from Kolkata and I did my bachelor's and master's in Isaac Tribunantapuram, where I studied biology as a major subject and chemistry as a minor subject. And the course work I attended there, out of all those, I liked ecology the most and developed deeper interest in that and that is why I joined their Monastery Ecology and Evolutionary, Evolutionary Ecology Lab headed by uh, Ullasa Kodandaramaya. In his lab I was studying uh, polymorphism and polyphonism. I am not going to detail what it is uh, in butterflies and actually I was uh, uh, checking in which habitat conditions these uh, phenomena are selected as anti-predatory strategy, basically favoring for uh, favoring these butterflies to survive and maintain their diversity. And uh, during this course, actually, I developed deeper interest in butterfly and other herbivore insects. And that is why I joined my PhD in a place where uh, I, could continue working on butterflies and other herbivores. So at University of Rennes on in France, I joined the team of Professor Andreas Prinzing, where I am looking at uh, the host tree conditions in a forest that favors uh, the uh, performance and phenotype of these uh, butterflies and other herbivore insects. Now, uh, how did I discover uh, a PhD position available in France? After, uh, like, during the final year of my uh, BSMS in Iser, I was open uh, to join a PhD position any place, uh, like in India as well as in, in abroad. And I was looking for positions there, but uh, before, uh, even before looking for a position uh, to, make myself eligible for a PhD in India, I appeared in three different exams, CSI, UGC NET, then GATE Ecology and Evolution, and JG Wills that is uh, conducted by TIFR. Then uh, to find positions, I was following uh, the websites of my, uh, of the institutes of my interests, where I was uh, planning to join a PhD, and also I was following the Indian uh, ecology, uh, uh, young ecology mailing list uh, called Yeti. Uh, so now similarly for uh, a PhD in abroad to make myself uh, eligible, I appeared in GRE and TOEFL. Uh, however, I did not need any of those to join a PhD in France. And also I did similar thing. I was uh, browsing, uh, websites of institutes and also website of the people whom I would like to work with. And that is what I suggest to everyone. You uh, do literature, literature search and see whom you would like to work with and then contact them because uh, uh, many people have their own project and funding to host a PhD. And also uh, for international uh, or uh, PhD abroad, I subscribed myself for uh, some other mailing lists such as Evolder and Ecolog. Also, I was following uh, the updates and news uh, from different ecological societies. Uh, ESA is from America, then this is British, and this is the French one. And there also sometimes there are some open positions announced. And also uh, I was following this European uh, website, Eurasis, where uh, most of the open positions are published. 
Now, the PhD project I am working on currently, I found that uh, from the mailing list of Evolda, and then I communicated with the supervisor, and I followed the same procedure that was described by uh, Philip uh, a few minutes ago. Now, uh, how did I ended up in France? So, uh, before uh, saying that, uh, like, okay, I had to choose uh, between IISC in India and uh, University of Rennes in France. But uh, in India, I had some multiple positions. Why did I choose IISC among them? Because uh, IISC has a dedicated department for ecology, which uh, most of the Indian institutes are lacking. Uh, there are only very few faculties in Department of Biology or something, people are working. Uh, so, so IISC or NC, uh, not NCBS, IISC, Ashoka Trust, uh, uh, and uh, Wildlife Institute, those are the institutes where there is dedicated Department of Ecology. So I choose IISC because they had a dedicated department. And then when I had the option to come to France, uh, I choose France over IISC thinking of uh, time. Okay, uh, the department I was talking about. So IISC that is Center for Ecological Science and here it is EcoBio uh, where I am working on right now. So I choose uh, this department uh, considering the time difference uh, of a PhD in India and in uh, France. In India, usually PhDs take five years, but in France, it takes uh, three years. So I thought, okay, I will be saving two years of my uh, career. Uh, and you can think of other uh, criteria based on that. You can uh, choose France, such as group. Say, uh, when you join a group, you do what the group does. So basically, if you are a very good or a bright student, but you choose a group uh, where people take seven years to complete PhD, you end up doing that. Uh, if you choose a group where people uh, uh, say uh, publish, uh, the group is publishing in low impact journals, you will end up doing that, even if you are a good student. So that's why uh, in France, the, uh, there is much more ecological studies than India. So you have more options to choose a group. And also uh, French universities and institutes has much more higher international ranking and more play as uh, top uh, sometimes in past and also in now one of the top. And also uh, another thing you can consider that is funding. Uh, funding uh, in terms of salary as well, in terms of uh, project funding as well, here uh, salary uh, is better compared to India and also uh, there are uh, I think much more, uh, like in, in my personal experience, I think much more uh, op opportunity to acquire funding for your project. Then uh, how it is to me to continue PhD in France, I will see it through these four uh, categories, time, money, uh, group, and ranking. Now time, uh, I personally felt uh, three years uh, is little short for a PhD. It is kind of rushing, especially like if you are working in experimental ecology or uh, you are doing some monitoring or it is not seasonal or, or you don't need to depend on season, then it is not a problem. But when, uh, in my case, I am doing field monitoring that is uh, seasonal dependent. And uh, if I see a pattern only in one year uh, and that I cannot show uh, reproducibility in another year, that, so the impact of research goes down. Uh, how, however, I am continuing uh, this system here, uh, three years PhD is continuing for many years, so it ought. Then money, uh, yes, uh, money is overall generally uh, very good uh, funding for yourself, uh, like that is your salary and your uh, living expenses, and also funding for your project. However, there is a catch. Uh, if you join a PhD that is offered by the doctoral school, uh, it is not funded by CNRS or any other uh, such as Marie Curie and all, then the doctoral school usually uh, give you your salary and a very little project money. And that might not sometimes be sufficient to conduct uh, very good, uh, ex uh, like say experimentation. So if you are joining a PhD position that is offered by the Institute, 
then you should make sure uh, the person you are working with, the supervisor has funding from his project some other way. And yes, group. Uh, I am very satisfied with groups here, uh, like departments. Departments are big, many people are working. So uh, you can discuss with many people and increase, uh, increase uh, your knowledge and improve yourself. And that option is limited uh, if you join uh, in, uh, the Indian institutes like IJAR. So there are only two or three maximum equality faculties in the whole institute. So the groups are really small and you don't have much option to choose from which group, which supervisor you join. And ranking, yes, it does matter. Uh, this ranking means something. So here, uh, these institutes are doing really great. And I uh, believe Indian students, especially students from universities need this sort of exposure, international exposure in their life. And that is why uh, definitely Indian students might choose, uh, may choose uh, French institutes and universities. I'm just going to probably ask one brief question that we have. Uh, is there any certain uh, amount of a fixed stipend that a PhD student gets uh, when they are funded? Is there a minimum uh, stipend? Uh, so, Dr. Philippe or uh, okay. anyone, if they want to take this question, please. Is there a minimum stipend? Minimum stipend? Stip uh, like... Uh, 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 with the contra doctoral, what would be the amount the, the doctoral candidate will get received per month? Minimum, um, approximately. I, approximately, uh, I don't have the exact uh, number in, in mind, but it's something like one thousand two or three hundred euro per per month. Uh, okay. In, okay. In uh, pocket, I, I get the salary. It. I might maybe uh, add in it. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, three, two, three years back, it was some 1,400 uh, net salary, and now the current PhDs get 1,700 euros. All right, thank you. And another question uh, in the field, this is for the panelists, in, the, in this field of marine sciences, uh, do you think there are postdoctorate options and can uh, uh, doctorate students directly contact their thesis supervisor or guide, or how do they go about doing a postdoc? If anyone can answer this question in the next 10 seconds, because we will really need to close this session. I'm so sorry for this. Okay. I don't know if Manel or Pascal, or I can provide an experience. But... Uh, if they go to, to Campus Mondial de la Mer or to the site of uh, uh, um, Sorbonne University, there are advertisements for postdoc positions. So it's really case by case, and uh, from it will, of course depends on the area. So okay. uh, it's all multidisciplinary. So uh, uh, we concentrated more and more. You know, have we used to have PhDs and we had the doctoral school, and now we have gathering of doctoral school, and it also it can also be done in companies. All right. This is something that India is eligible for. We call it Bursa Sif, and uh, that means the PhD candidate can be hired by a company or the postdoc, and then do the research in cooperation between a company and the research lab. It's more in technology than in, but it happens also for fisheries or uh, pharmaceutical industry or something like this. All right. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, we will not be able to take more questions. If I have individual questions for you, I will email them to you and you can reply to the student directly. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for your time, for coming and being a part of this session. Thank you so much, uh, Philippe, Manel, Pascal, and Somen. Uh, and thank you all for attending this session.